We're here with head men's volleyball coach Glenn DeHaven from Juniata College and student athletes Reese Gander and Tyler Phillips following Juniata's five set win over Springfield in the opening round of the NCAA tournament. Coach, an opening statement, please. I think all I can say is wow. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Uh, these guys work their butts off. They have all year. Um, you know, I, I, I was talking to them in a couple of the late huddles and just talking about how we train with these scores and we train in our practice gym and we're lucky enough to have, you know, a, a full group of 21 guys that can play at a super high level and honestly, shout out to those guys for preparing us for, you know, that epic match that just took place. Coach, you hit 500 over the first two sets. What was clicking? Oof. When you hit 500, I think the word is everything. Uh, you know, we, we passed well. We, we obviously reset an amazing game. We distributed the ball around. We were fairly balanced. Uh, and it also helps when, when this guy over here does what he did through the first two sets. He was a monster. What adjustments did Springfield make then to, I don't want to say undo, that's the wrong word, but, you know, kind of take momentum from you guys in sets three and four? I think they're also an incredibly deep team, and I think you know he shuffled some guys in and out, and they played consistent through those um, sets three and four, and even most of set five, where they kind of you know just were super balanced and efficient, and they cleaned up their game from the service line, and they put a lot of pressure on us, um, and in sets two and three, we were kind of just not unable to answer. Reese, I've seen. Not a ton of volleyball, obviously, you guys have seen more than I have, but and I've seen a lot of fives in the set column. I don't know that I've seen a six. <laughs> 60, 61 assists, uh, team had 67 assists on 69 kills, which is absolutely ridiculous. What was clicking on the offense, and how much do you take pride in, in what Coach said, right? Distributing and balancing the offense. Right, yeah, I mean, like Coach said here, I mean, everything was clicking on offense. The first two, um, we really did a really good job um, and serve receive, uh, where uh, our serve receive guys just really gave me the opportunity to distribute the ball where I felt we had mismatches or kind of just where the flow of the game was taking it. Um, and it seemed like Springfield struggled with that. Three and four, I agree. I think they really found it from the service line and it got us out of system a lot, but we still put balls away at a, at a decent clip. Um, we hit 391 and 346 in games three and four. So. I mean, it's a slight dip, but that's still, in the in the big picture, that's still pretty great. So um, all the credit goes to my teammates. I mean, Tyler Phillips here with a career game, um, 23 kills on 41 attempts. Like, that's pretty ridiculous. And we had three other guys in double digits, uh, another was six. So, I mean, it's when our offense is clicking, it's a well-oiled machine. And, I mean, it's hard to stop. It doesn't really matter who you are. but. When it's clicking and all guys are, are all guys are firing, it's it's pretty scary. So, shout out to my whole team. Really, they they're the ones that make that number a six and not a five. So, <laughs> yeah. Tyler, twenty three kills, as your teammate said, forty one attacks. Uh, excuse me, a three ninety hitting percentage. Another day at the office for you, sir. Uh, <laughs> take us through from a player perspective, kind of the ebbs and flows of the match tonight. It was just a whole lot of fun, a whole lot of energy, and you win ba games by being aggressive and going for it. And you only get score points by being aggressive. So, Reese with amazing sets, putting the ball in the air, was just have some fun, go for it. Let it all loose and have some fun. And that led us to be successful. 61 assists is crazy. Hitting three, uh, 415 in a five set match is awesome. I think just everything clicked. Tyler, we were. I was talking with the photographer and the videographer during the match because they try to get all kinds of balanced stuff, and I said, you got to look, you got to get a camera on the coach. And mm. there was a point that you guys hit, and the coach, you know, the coach DeHaven is out on the floor, red face, pumping his fists, and it was perfect timing. <laughs> How much do you guys on the court feed off that energy? We, we just absolutely love it. Our energy comes right from the bench, and this, the excitement goes all year round, and our bench keeps us engaged in matches, and they help drive our energy forward and help us on the court and we're a little down sometimes. They bring us up all the time. Love those guys. Uh, yeah, it's my, this is my uh, fourth year and I couldn't even tell you how many times I've seen Glenn with a red <laughs> face, but whether that's a good or bad good thing, or it bad. depends. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, not only do we feed off his energy when we're in when big matches like that, but 
off each other's energy. I mean, the bench did a great job tonight. The guys on the court did a great job tonight. Uh, we talked about before the match that like a lot of things are going to go our way tonight, and we got to build on that and uh, try to f keep that momentum going. And a lot of things aren't going to go our way. That's just kind of how the sport of volleyball works. But you just have to move on, believe in the hard work that we put in, and I mean that hard work showed tonight. We went in a game on 22-20 in the fifth set. So. Speaking of that fifth set, there were certainly times where Springfield looked like they were on the verge of clinching that match. In your, in your all opinion, collectively, what was the tide turning point? What was the thing that kind of swung that pendulum back to Juniata? Uh, yeah, I can answer that too. Um, I think we didn't change our mentality in that fifth set at any point. Like we were going to stay aggressive. We were going to live or die off of our aggressive play. And I think Springfield was a little timid from the service line when they were really having great success in three and four. And I think when we were getting into those extra points in the fifth set, I think they kind of pulled off the gas a little bit. And we had the opportunity to uh, side out at a pretty high clip again. And I really do think that was the game changer. Um, I mean, if they were aggressive too, they could have missed serves or it could have got us out of system. But I think they they took off the gas a little bit. and. We stayed firing. We just wanted to keep the pressure on them as much as possible. And, I mean, it worked in our favor, so. Siding out at 85% um, typically is helpful. Yeah. Uh, they sided out at 77%, which is also above, you know, our typical goal of 70. Um, you know, for me, where that swings, we, once we got back into a passing rhythm, we were able to distribute the ball. Once again, our offense, when it goes, is pretty tough. Um, you know, so like they both said, staying aggressive and just kind of going after it. We've lived by that all year. Right? We know if we're going to win, we're going to do it our way. And, you know, once again, that's what we preach. Coach, he's not with us here, but senior Luke Hoffman, love and kills, five blocks. What was so, what was clicking for him at the net that he was able to be such a disruptive force uh, down the stretch I, I think once again Luke always works really hard um, you know middle I think is such an underrated position in terms of how difficult it is to go pin to pin with today's offense in the men's game and how fast it is and to add on to top of that the bick from the back row right defending four attackers with three blockers is hard um, I think he would probably look at that number personally and tell me he should have had more because um, I know he was frustrated and that's where they did a great job but you know, once again, closing, getting his hands across the net. He got some big blocks in moments, and our guys like to refer to uh, some of those blocks, too, as farming. So, you know, if the, if the pin guy does a good job and the middle's up in the air, they get some love, too. So uh, as long as he keeps working hard, that'll be great. Tyler, let's turn our attention to tomorrow. A familiar opponent uh, on their home floor this time. We have the first two matches, uh, one in your building and one at Messiah. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Does that help? Does that hurt? Or is it everything's out the window and we just play volleyball tomorrow? I'm just really excited to see them again. Another opportunity to play a really good opponent and to play them at that home, their home gym. Um, we're just going to take it tomorrow. We're going to have some fun, have some energy in this player style of ball. That's just going to help us be successful from the service line, being aggressive, being playing defense, and all the way around. Just have a lot of fun. Coach, we'll close with this. Mm -hmm. Something that Coach Sullivan kind of spoke to earlier. Five sets here, five sets, uh, Loris and trying. You know, other competitive matches across the first round of the tournament. What does that speak to about the level of competition in Division Three volleyball this season? It, honestly, it's amazing. It's as deep as it's ever been. Um, it was it's really exciting this year to see the ABCA expand their rankings to 20 because um, I think it's much deserved. I mean, there are, there are more than 20 quality teams in the country. Uh, I know back when I was a player, um, that was not the case. So it's it's really fun to see the sport grow, the competitiveness grow, um, it growing at the high school level, new states adding men's volleyball. I mean, that's it's so good for our sport, um, and it's exciting to see competitive. And honestly, it's the NCAA tournament, baby. Anything can happen. Congratulations on a five-set win this evening. Good luck tomorrow.